Hello everyone, congratulations, you have made it to, you have made it through the episode spring of Gilmore Girls in a Light. Yay! So today I'm here to talk about all about the spring episode. I have done a video previously on winter and I will do ones for fall and summer. Again, if you have not seen spring, please do not watch this video because I will spoil it and I will only be talking about spring this episode, so please be aware of that. Please do not leave spoilers for summer and fall in the comments, just keep this to winter and spring as we're going to go chronologically. Here we go. So we open up with Emily and Lorelai in therapy. It's not going so great. They're both not talking. I think they're both just very wary of what to say. They still haven't really had, you know, I feel like Emily and Lorelai will never get their feelings situated, which is hard because in mother-daughter relationships are especially hard. And I feel like they're never going to solve anything. If they're even in therapy, they're not even talking. So I'm just, oh, I want them so badly to like be okay and be good and get in the groove of being, you know, in a great relationship. But I'm just, oh, the scene with them in the, like therapy, they had to leave because they both just didn't even talk to her and the whole thing. And it was just, oh, guys, guys, we need to work on our communication here. Like, for reals. And we pick up with Rory being still kind of lost with her career, not knowing where to go. She has this one job that's really been trying to get her for a while called a website called Sandy Said. It's almost like the next BuzzFeed or something. And they really want her to come on and all that stuff. And she doesn't really want that, but that's the only thing that's kind of really optional right now. So that's still on the back burner. Rory's still much very lost in her career. And then we see basket bidding, which brings my heart to so many joys of season three, where Luke and Lorelai and their basket bidding, and she even said, you know, back in our early romance days, basket bidding, basket bidding. And I was like, oh guys, oh guys, this is just, this is just so beautiful. And then we see Mrs. Kim, which is great. She's a very small thing. And then the shocker of all shockers, Lane says, oh, there's, there's my dad, say hi. And she's like, and Lori says, hi, Mr. Kim. Guys, this is the first time we've ever seen Mr. Kim. I have always thought that he was passed away, if I'm honest with you. Because in the very first episode, you know, Lane says my parents, my parents a lot in the first season especially. But then after that, it just becomes her mom. And we don't ever talk about Mr. Kim ever. So everyone's like, where the hell is Mr. Kim? And we finally see him. <laughs> I found that so odd. But at least it answers questions. Mr. Kim's alive. He looks like a nice man. He just might be holed up in the attic somewhere and locked up forever. Miss Kim might just keep him up there and she may be let him out for International Food Festival days. What? That's so random. Then we see Jackson, but Jackson, there's, we see Jackson, but there's no Suki. I did feel that scene kind of forced because it was just, I think we were just catching up with Jackson for like two seconds and we were like, oh, bye. But I was like, oh man, I still want to see Suki. When is Suki going to be in this show? Because I need Suki. Like... Like I say, everyone's my favorite. Suki's one of my favorites. Suki is just a, a beautiful and amazing character. I love Suki, so I'm so sad we haven't seen Suki yet. So then we have Rory back in London. So apparently every time Rory's in London, she's staying with Logan, which we all know that learn up a relationship still, which I'm not cool with. I'm not cool with that at all. And then they go out to lunch one day, and then we see Mitchum. Mitchum freaking Huntsberger, that guy that we all want to punch in the face like 50,000 times. He shows up and, you know, he says something about Logan having a fiance that lives in Paris. What? Logan, so not only, not only are Logan and Rory in an open relationship, Logan is engaged and Rory knows about it. Oh my gosh. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Like Rory, we have been through this with Dean. Now we're gonna go, why? Why, why, why? So after that, after that, I was like still wary about being on Team Logan after the open relationship. Now that I learned that he's engaged, I'm, I'm done, I'm Logan. Like I had so, <laughs> I had so much faith in Logan so much. And then he shattered it all with two sentences from his freaking father. Like, all that growth, all that growth of Logan, it's gone. It's gone. It's just psst, gone. I'm, and I'm even mad at Rory. Rory has been in this situation before and she's put herself right back in it. Why? Why are we doing this again? I just, I'm sorry. I can't get over it. I'm just, makes no sense. Makes no sense. We go back to a Star's Hollow Town meeting where Taylor is there and they are talking about having a gay pride parade, which is great. And then they say, they're saying they don't have enough gays and they were trying to borrow some from Woodbury and Andrew's line. Oh, it's just a quintessential amazing Star's Hollow Town meeting, which is just the best thing ever. Then we learn more about Luke and Lorelai. Luke really doesn't want a lot of change. He's very happy with what he has. You know, Rory, Lorelai's still trying to talk him about the surrogate thing and he's pretty much saying, no, 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 I don't want that, I don't want that, no. Still at a really big crossroads with Luke and Lorelai, that's going on. 
Sorry, I'm referring to my notes. Then Lorelai has this Paul Anka during, which I wasn't going to mention, but I'm like, this is the second time Paul Anka, the real Paul Anka, has been in the show, which I just... <laughs> It's the best thing ever. I want a dog. I want to name a Paulinka because, I mean, why not? Because it's amazing. Then we go back to therapy again where they're actually talking and then they're laughing and then they're fighting again. And Emily is still upset that Lorelai has left when she was 16, when she was when she had Rory, and then she just up and left. She still can not get over that. And Lorelai's trying to tell her that, you know, we're here now, I'm here now, and all that stuff. And I think, you know, it's hard. It's so hard. You know, when I first watched the show, I did not like Emily. I despised Emily and thought she was a horrible person. But as I rewatch it more and more, I feel for Emily more and more because as I age, you know, I think I think my feelings change. Emily's just feeling, you know, left out. She's feeling left because Lorelai left and that's just really, really, really has injured her a lot and she just cannot get over that and that's just a big gap I don't think will ever be filled between them and I wish it would because I want them to have such a strong relationship and I see that they can but they just can't communicate well. And it's just heartbreaking to watch, honestly. It's just oh, so hard. This letter that she's talking about that Emily said that Lorelai I wrote and Lorelai's like I didn't write it and we don't really get any resolution from that letter. I don't we don't learn anything about it but we just have Lorelai storming out because she's very sure that she did not write that letter. I don't know what was going on with that. I'm like why are we talking about this letter? Like I don't ever remember anything about this letter. Rory in London trying to write this book with this person that she wrote um, about in the New Yorker and this person I think she's a she's an actress. I know a lot of people have talked about her. I've never seen her before if I'm honest with you but she's a little bit crazy in the show. Like I'm like oh I don't know if you could work with her because she is just very unhinged. Very unhinged is the correct word for that. Very, very odd. I've seen of Rory and Logan and it's so bad because I think they're so amazing together. I can see how much they love each other, especially how much Logan loves Rory. And I want it so freaking bad, but he is engaged and we still keep doing this. We're, they're both just adding poison to this huge poisonous vat of poison and it's just getting worse. It's, the poison is accumulating. This is the worst metaphor whatever but it that's how i'm feeling i just feel like they could be so great together i don't know why he has to be engaged is he even in love with his fiance we don't know anything about that we don't talk about that we just know it's his fiance and her name's odette i don't know but we don't know anything about that rory and logan is so clearly in love with rory still but i just i want it to be so bad but support this i can't support this and oh logan it breaks my heart it breaks my heart because oh, it breaks my and we have um, the Black, Red, and Red Theater, which is the best thing ever. And we have another short film by Kirk, which is again amazing because it is Kirk because he is just the best. And we also go back to the, I'm sorry, I go fast with this, guys, but I just try to go scene for scene, pretty much almost. And then we have Rachel Ray. There, this show has a lot of different um, cameos by actress, but I found Rachel Ray's to be very... I didn't think it was necessary in a bit. I know that they were talking about Michelle leaving, about Michelle, Lorelai's feeling that Michelle is very feeling complacent and that he wants growth with the dragonfly, but she can't give him growth because of the restrictions of where the dragonfly is. And so she's really worried about losing him to another job. And Rachel Ray kind of talks to her, but I still feel like it was a very odd scene. I was like, I don't know why you're here, Rachel Ray. I don't know. I don't know. Then we have a scene where Luke and Emily talk and that's a very rarity in this show because Luke and Emily usually don't get along. I do like the fact that they hug occasionally. It makes my heart very warm to see that Emily I think has finally accepted that Luke is going to be in her life forever but she don't think she likes it but they still hug which is great. But we learned that Richard has left Luke a, a lot of money to franchise Luke, something that he clearly does not want and Emily helps him out with that. She, she wants to help him with, with opening a franchise and so they have a day and they go off and look at locations and it's just very odd because it's like this is not Luke this is not Luke which let's talk about Caesar forget about Caesar his hair his hair that's all I'm gonna say about Caesar <laughs> and we have a great scene with Chilton in it we have Rory and Paris go back to Chilton and it was great Rory gave a great speech in front of students Paris scared the crap out of hers which doesn't surprise anybody because it's Paris but headmaster Charleston tells her that you know she could he could really see that she'd be a good teacher and I agree with him I think she could be a great teacher, but I know that's not what she wants, and she knows that's not what she wants. She's, she still very much just doesn't know what she wants to do with her life. She's not really having any jobs coming in. It's just very, a big question mark, honestly, a lot. Then you have one of my favorite scenes where Paris and Rory are walking out, and then Paris thinks, and Paris sees Tristan, which, by the way, is not Chad Michael Murray, which is a travesty, because that would have been, I tell you what, if they would have brought Chad Michael Murray back, and then Paris and him were together, that would have been, that would have been great. Or just seeing Chad Michael Murray, like, 
it would have been great, but it's not him. But either way, Paris has a freaking meltdown. Like the Paris has had a lot of meltdowns, but this has been a really big meltdown. She, Paris is this, this strong, amazing businesswoman that owns her own high, high, high profile fertility, fertility clinic. She's calling her nonstop about surrogates and fertility and all that kind of stuff. And yet the sight of Tristan makes her go back to her 15 year old self and she cannot handle it. Like she loses her junk. And it is a sight to watch. Like she knows that she is becoming unraveled, unhinged. And she's like, you know, I'm still in love with Tristan. She's the one side of him. And she's just like, she's like, I'm carrying this briefcase and it's completely empty and all this stuff. And then we have Francie walking. Are we back in senior year again? Because Paris again loses her junk. She's like, are you guys plotting behind my back? You guys email each other? What do you guys do? Like, you guys are plotting behind my back? Just like senior year. And I'm like, what the crap? Like, calm down. And Francie, and they just go off on each other. And it was just amazing. Like, Paris is, like, still has so much insecurity in herself, as a lot of us do. But she really, man, she, that was, that was, that was an amazing scene. One of my favorite scenes of the whole revival was Paris losing her junk, because oh, losing her junk over the sight of Tristan, like, it's just amazing how a 30-year-old woman can see a boy that she had a crush on when she was 14 years old and just lose everything, like, everything sane in her brain out the window out the freaking window. <laughs> and we see Doyle again after we go back. We finally get to see Paris' kids, which I still can't believe Paris had kids. I just, I couldn't believe it. I thought Paris would be the one that would be like, never kids, never. And Doyle is like a screenwriter now. He's like hip and cool and all that stuff. And it's just very funny. Doyle is great. I love Danny Strong. He was in Buffy a lot, which by the way, there's a lot of Buffy references in the show, which I just very, very happy about, very happy about. Then we have another scene with Logan leaving his bed to talk to Rory and she's asking him to talk to his dad for a uh, meeting with Condé Nast and it's just, <sighs> Logan, I want to punch him in the face 50 times now. Like, Logan, I was, I loved you so much, Logan, and you let me down so hard, so hard. And then we see we have um, Luke going with the franchise with Emily that whole time was asking about Emily about the therapy and Emily's like, I quit that weeks ago. Um, Lorelai, he's learned that Lorelai has been lying, you know, saying that she's been going with her mom, but he, she really hasn't because her mom hasn't been going. So where has Lorelai been going? Probably the sessions alone, like we saw a little bit of. So we're already seeing more and more problems surface up with Luke and Lorelai, which makes me so very sad because I, I'm very much involved in the Rory's love life, apparently, as I go on about Logan, but I really ultimately am more concerned about Luke and Lorelai because I just I adore them so much. They are so perfect together. So the fact that they're having so many problems makes me very sad, but it makes it very realistic because every couple has real life problems and real life struggles. So we have Rory working on this piece in lines, like everybody waits, waits in lines wherever they go. I'm, she's waiting all these lines, and then we get to see Mae Whitman, which if you don't know who that is, that is pretty much Amber Braverman from Parenthood, which pretty much, if you didn't know, Lauren Graham was in Parenthood, which is one of my other all-time favorite shows, and May Whit and May Whitman played her daughter on that show. Her name was Amber, and they had a scene together, and it was just it was so adorable. I love, I love that. I love that. It was just, it was everything I wanted. I love all these cameos and how they're not that. I don't feel like that one was forced at all. I thought it was just a very cute one. I think it was just for all our Parenthood fans out there because <sighs> Parenthood. So good. We have another, let me have a scene with Rory having a little bit of a breakdown saying that she slept with a Wookiee, which <laughs> it was her first one night stand and it was with a Wookiee and it was just very odd. And she's again, really struggling with her life and her career and what she's gonna do. And she just really doesn't know what is going on with herself. She's just really feeling lost. At the very end of this episode, we have Rory deciding to move home for Stars Hollow, like for good. Like she doesn't wanna be moving around to London or staying with with Paris, staying with her grandmother, staying wherever. She's decided to move home to Stars Hollow. So that's how, that's how spring ends. And I like this one more than winter, I will say. I give it a four, maybe four out of five, I'd say. I did like this one a lot. I felt like it, you know, answered a lot of questions. We see more Luke and Lorelai struggle. We see more Rory being kind of lost or where she wants to go. We got a lot of Paris, which is great because I love Paris. She's one of the strongest characters in my opinion. And I just love that. Um, we still have no Jess, which does make me sad because I'm still, you know, I have high hopes for Jess because I definitely have high hopes now because of what Logan's done. What the crap's going on with that? That's just a disaster right there. Oh, I don't want to talk about this. Oh my gosh. 
Logan messing me up, Luke and Lorelai messing me up, Emily and Lorelai having problems, it's all messing me up. So if you've seen Spring, let me know down in the comments what you thought of it. Was it your favorite out of the four? Was it your least favorite? Let me know what you thought. I do know that Spring and Summer were written by Daniel Palladino, not Amy. That's her husband. And I will say, I think that Spring and Summer might be my least favorite of them all, I will say. I'll talk more about that in detail. But yeah, I did like Spring. Um, I don't know. Do I like winter or spring more? I might be gearing toward I liking winter more. I feel like spring maybe a three and a half and winter maybe a four i still i need to rewatch this apparently again if you watched it please let me know down in the comments what you thought about it and hopefully i didn't leave anything out but i'm sure i did forgive me because i didn't want to keep this video like 30 minutes long which it could be but i hope not if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and i will see you in the next one bye